Hi, Tappers. Let's discuss how to recognize a self-abandonment trigger and what to do once you are there. A trigger can come from anything and even out of the blue. So I don't have an exhaustive list for you, but rather a way to begin to notice changes that can signify to you that you are in a situation of overwhelm that leads to self-abandonment. First, let's set some expectations. It's likely you have addressed this as very on off. I'm all in, I'm all out. Giving yourself ways to allow gradients or middle steps is a big win. It is unlikely that you will be able to shift 100% all at once right away. But that doesn't mean you have to wait until you change it 100% to feel better, which is my next point. Give yourself permission to feel really good about each step of progress. It's likely when you self-abandoned, it was because someone outside of you left first. It would then make sense that you would try to get those outside of you to see your worth before accepting your worth on your own. They left, so you left. They come back, you come back. Only healing doesn't work that way. My final point is we aren't doing small steps because, well, that's all you can handle or all you can understand. It's because it's all your subconscious brain needs to begin its process. If you want a snack, you don't go to a buffet. You go get that specific snack and enjoy how satisfying that is. Same here. We are looking to supply happy little brain snacks. Okay. Let's do it. Remember, even though this may bring up emotions, we are looking to stay in the curious zone of investigation. We can process emotions about it after we discover what we have to look at here. Step one, you now have a preference for everything. Did that make you feel uncomfortable? It did me the first time I heard it because having a preference means what? What does that mean to you? Pause this video, write down those thoughts and so that you can tap them out when we're done here. For me, it meant I would offend everyone and they would leave me. I was told I was a fussy baby. They called me Miss Pris. How was I fussy? I was sensitive to my environment and I didn't like being tossed in the air. And this is kind of an older generation thing, but it used to be considered embarrassing if you held a baby and they reacted negatively to you, which is apparently what I did often. So I, as a baby, got a lot of negative reactions and sat back down or passed off rather than comforted when I expressed my needs in the only way I could. So when I agreed to always have an opinion, that was a huge trigger for me. But I also saw it as I was speaking those out loud and I was acting on them every time. Nope, small steps. And this step is recognizing that you do have a preference and all you do is recognize it within yourself. If it feels safe to share, share. But the point right now is to hold space so that your own opinion can exist again in you. Step two, now that you have this preference or opinion, what emotions come up for you when you have it, but it isn't shared? What emotions come up when you think about sharing? Write them down and tap through them using chasing the pain, which is the clinical EFT technique of tapping how the emotion feels in your body. I'll give you an example of what I remember of how all of this rolled out for me when I first began. Okay, I know I have an opinion on everything. I already feel like I'm trying to space myself from that, so I must be having feelings about it. I'm scared of it. It's okay that I'm scared. I don't really have to do this. I can quit. I can quit and not do it at all. I am choosing to do this. I'm in control, and it's okay if it's really uncomfortable at first. And I don't ever have to say anything out loud. I just need to figure out how I feel about things. It's pretty much dinner time. What do I want for dinner? I don't care what I have for dinner. I wonder what everybody else wants. It's easier to just agree. Oh, this is stupid to try and figure it out. I guess if I have to have an opinion, 
Well, it's not possible because this is a restaurant in another state and it's not a chain, but their enchiladas do sound good. And that is a win. How is it a win? Because I heard my own voice. It's okay that I can't eat that meal and that others won't know that I had this thought. The point is, I am acknowledging it. And if you apply this rule of having a preference, you will discover where your triggers lie. As you voice your opinion to yourself, you will become more and more aware of when and how you have checked out, and maybe even why. It's a simple way to answer a lot of questions. And don't discount the importance of hearing yourself out. As your subconscious brain learns that you are now an active part of what is being considered, it will begin networking your life in this way. And that, my dear tappers, is the beginning foundation for being allowed to hold your space in this world. I hope this intrigues you. Go for it and tell me how it goes. We have one more video in this series. I'll see you soon.